keep it going. Hus. This for you, boy. Hus. Boy, I got a unique hus. I had to get it out the mud. I hus. I ain't waiting on shit. I hus. Everything I get, I hus. I grind all the time. I hus. Money on my mind. I hus. Why you out here sleep? I hus. Staying in these streets. I hus. Anything you want, you can get it. Down from the shoes to the shirt to the feet. Check it, check it, check it. It's a unique hustle. It's your boy ECO, and I'm here with the official Miss Jamaica. Dr. Hey, going on? what's going on now? Hey, we got a special guest, man. Somebody that uh really, you know, you guys, hey man, he's been in film. Man, this guy, man, he's been helping people, man. You know, people who get released from prison, man. He's got a good heart, man. A heart from God, man. A guy that um, like I said, man, cotton pickles, right? True uh, story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Robert. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fleetwood, Bowden, man. What's going on, baby? Man, I'm just thankful to be thankful. You know, the day is a gift from God. I'm trying to maximize it. I'm thankful that he gave it to me. I'm honored to be sitting here across the table from you. You know, you're listening and looking at a miracle. Hey, yeah, yeah, yeah. We're going to get into it. I, I, I definitely just appreciate you guys for stopping in, man, straight out of Oakland. You know, but you guys, man, y'all came from Arizona, right? True story. I've been in Arizona for four years. I had my first child, me and rapping Forte. Went to the Super Bowl 2015, and I got the best gift ever. And that's my daughter, Zephaniah Miley Rose Bowden. She's the CEO of three companies right now. She's three years old. And uh, I've been down there, you know, just watching her nurture me. And her mama didn't work out, but I respect her, her moms, you know. And uh, right now I'm just going hard for my daughter grandbabies, you know. Check so, it. So I've been down in that desert. God blessed me to drive a train down there. Yeah. I never thought I'd do nothing like that, but that ain't, way, that ain't why he let me out the penitentiary. Okay. He let me out the penitentiary to take these gifts that he's given me and lead the loss to him. Let me let, let me go back on something you just yes, said. Sir. <clears throat> yes, sir. Um, so rapping for Tay, I, you got a relationship with this guy? Yes, sir. ain't nobody in the Bay I don't have a relationship with. I'm the only person in the Bay that wrote his own book and it was a national bestseller. Wow. I'm the only person in the Bay that had a reentry program for the last twenty years. Helping people transition from any form of incarceration, and they ain't never asked the government for a penny. Wow! So they gotta respect it. A lot, you know, people might not like it, but they're gonna respect that they're grind. Gonna, you gotta respect it, man. Yeah. So, so, so you helped a lot of lot of brothers. Down. How did you? How was that process? Of how did you do that? Like a lot of people, like we've. We, that's our passion. Yeah. is helping people, and right. sometimes you want to understand the process right. of how you could help one. Right. You know, we don't know how you get into that, especially one that say say you FaceTime and you mm-hmm. like, okay, how. Am I'm gonna get back to help these brothers. Yeah. How would you do it? Well, you get on you get on Boss Talk Radio one on one. You know, you get on platforms like this and you tell your story. And you ask for help. Okay. So you know, my thing is called Seven Two Hours of Hope. Usually, it's the third day that you go back to whatever you was doing that got you incarcerated, or either you start back using drugs or mm-hmm. whatever because mm-hmm. you don't promise a lot of people. You promise God. You promise your girl. You promise your children. You know, you was a lot of brothers are uh, institutionalized because we was rebels on the street. We had no discipline or structure. So when you get behind that wall, either you're going to have to get structure because they're going to demand you to work or either you're going to have to stay in that cell 23 hours. So that's why a lot of brothers and sisters are at their best behind the walls is just being able to transition back 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 into society and do the same thing, but when you got a lot of temptation at you, it's hard to do it. But a lot of them come out with the momentum, wanting to change, wanting to have an opportunity to change. But the first three days is the most crucial time. So my third, I, I done promised, made all them promises many times, but this time I went into a shelter. I was determined. I told the man, look here, sir, I need a job to quit to keep from helping to rob somebody like you who got a job. Correct. I just got a prison, man. I ain't playing. I want to trade. He told me to calm down. He was going to give me a job. His name was Willie Hall, 39 Fails, San Francisco, drop in center. I filled out the application, told me to start the next day. I walked out of there and started crying, and I knew my life was about to change. So I called a couple of my homies, DJ X, one of them, told him I wanted to come on KPOO radio, the black biggest black radio station in Frisco, tell my story. I went on there. I'm talking like I'm talking now. I say, look, I want to put together a nonprofit because the Bay Area is hippies and Black Panthers. We not Crips or Bloods. We come, we were revolutionaries. That's what our households are. So you know, it's more community-based organizations in the Bay Area than anywhere. Okay. So I went on the radio and said I want to start my own nonprofit reentry program and find some people like this man who has gave me a job, but I don't know what I'm doing. The whole board lit up. People called in and said they wanted to help me with my articles of incorporation. The bylaws, um, Perkins and Coy, who've been my lawyers now for 20 years, wow. one of the biggest law firms, website people call, 
just all kind of people, newspapers, they was calling, said they wanted to help me. Then a lady called, and she said, um, I just became a district attorney of San Francisco, and I'm sitting here listening to you. I feel your passion. I want you to come to my office when you leave. I went to her office, and she gave me a letter of endorsement from the San Francisco district attorney office, and that lady today is the vice president of the United States. Wow. See what I'm saying? So if anybody out there seeking, you know, to help people find your platform like Boss Talk 101, get on a community-based radio station, tell your, t- tell your story. You know what I'm saying? You know, some people going to always feel is the truth. You come from the heart, it's going to reach the heart. There's a lot of people in powerful positions that have been through struggles that want to support somebody, helping somebody who's going through a struggle. Man, so so that's 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 something that's else. Right. I, I love it, man. It, it, it just shows you the power of God, man. True story. It, it, you know, and it shows you the power of getting behind a microphone. Yeah. That's powerful. You don't yes, know sir. who's going to hear you. You don't story. know. Yeah. And, 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 and the thing, I, I just want to say, so let's go back. How long were you locked up? Well, I, first time I've been in the cell was I was 12 years old in Martinez, California, and I went back and forth my whole life. And I added up one day, it was 16 years. The longest I ever did years. was from 91 to 90, 90 to 96. I, my grandmama and them told me I had to leave California. Um, I had got out, I think, like 89. And they was like, you got to go somewhere. You keep going to jail. That was during the end of the crack era, yeah. you know. And um, I had just got out the feds. And I met the four, the three biggest drug lords of the whole United States. Wow. They're still my friends to this day. They were looking for Freeway Rick Ross. We were okay. watching them on TV. So anyway, my grandma was like, you got to get up out of here. So we're going to give you $2,000 where you want to go. At the time, Minneapolis, Minnesota was the new Motown. Janet Jackson and all them was up there. You know, you know, Janet Jackson, Prince, um, Ter- Terry Lee Lewis, all them was doing their thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I ain't know nobody up there. I said, man, I want to go to Minnesota because I don't know nobody. Wow. So I went to Minneapolis, got me an apartment, I started going to music school for audio engineering, and I found out that an ounce of cocaine cost $1,200. Yeah, I could yeah. get it for 400 So wow. my homie started sending it to me in the mail. I was doing cool for a while. Some cats tried to rob me. I jumped out of the window, hit my face on the side of a fence. I had four ounces in my underwear, and I woke up handcuffed to a hospital. I mean, wow. handcuffed to the hospital bed, bed with mm-hmm. a gown on. They wow. found the drugs. I had previous charges in San Francisco and Oakland, so they gave me 60 months. I started adding it up. I said, man, that's five years, man. Wait a minute. I said, hold on, man. Y'all got some kind of diversion or some program, man. I said, man, that's a long time. I had never did that long of a stretch. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The first year, I was blaming the white man, you know. Second year, I was blaming them girls who stopped seeing me. Third year, I was blaming them Negroes who wouldn't send me no money no more. The fourth year, I looked in the mirror and said, it was you who made the, cons- the choices to wow. lead to the consequences you live in now. And that's when I stopped lifting weights. I started reading the word, hanging with the OGs. And just preparing myself for my departure because I had an out date. Wow. So I got out. I formed a group called Probable Cause. We had a hit record. They on something. It's on the internet right now. And it was blowing. And then the Bay Area independent scene had really started blowing. My, my partner, JT, the bigger figure, had just wow. went um, in the priority. Him, Master P, and Ice Cube and got a million dollars a piece. JT was the youngest one. So... You know, my group probable cause, we broke up because we all was from different street organizations. And as it started going up, their leaders was like, he think he Master P, y'all need him, mm-hmm. just come with us. Mm-hmm. So I told them to go on about their business. I went back to the Bay Area, and um, JT had a uh, movie coming out with Mac Maul um, called Beware of Those. He told me he was going to put me on a soundtrack, and he signed me to a two-year deal. And um, I went back to the Bay and um, you know, it's been you know love since then, man. Wow, man, that's a that's crazy. You know, but I, but but the whole thing was Isn't it something. I I I realized then I was becoming an old rapper, and I had always followed old Shay Jackson, which is cute. He wrote the whole straight out of Compton album, right. except yeah, for yeah, Red yeah, Bull. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm very familiar. He was the only one that wouldn't take no check when they offered him the money because uh-huh. he knew his genius. And he's a business-minded dude. Mm-hmm. So I, I remember that about Cube. Then I remember I seen him in Boys in the Hood, and that's when I realized, hey, I got to elevate my pen. My pen bleed heavy because I'm a storyteller, but I can't be no old rapper. Yeah. But if I write a book, there's no limitations on me as no an author. No age limit. No age limit. Mm-hmm. So that's when I wrote Hip Hop Tried to Kill Me, the story of my life, and it blew up as a national best-selling artist. I'm the only one in the Bay it's a lot of people that got books out, but I'm the only one who wrote his own book, self published it, and it was a national bestseller. Wow. I'm the only one. Ain't, ain't God good? Man, God. Won't is, he do it? Man, that's the big homie. God is not a miracle around. You got to turn to him because he won't turn on you. 
Man. He said, how the faith of a mustard seed is all you need. And that's the smallest seed that it ever was. Mm. PP, you know, praise God Man. and pray. You can call him Allah, Yahweh, Buddha, mm. Jesus, whatever you want to call him. Just call him because he ain't going to block your number. No, he ain't going to block you. You know what I'm saying? You can't he go into you right through it, don't he? Yeah, you can't go into this devilish world with no protection. You got to spend time with God every morning. And you can't put nothing above God, no money, no woman, car, nothing, because he's jealous. Exactly. Anytime you do that, if your, life, if your life is going not the way you want to go, and you call it bad luck, that's because God ain't proud of what you're doing. You need to reevaluate yourself. And you ain't got to be perfect. Ain't nobody perfect but a hypocrite. Man. It ain't about what happened in church. It's how you walk when you leave church or the mosque or whatever. Yeah, it's easy to be, you know, be a Christian or be a Muslim or whatever you call yourself when everybody looking or listening. But what you gonna do when ain't nobody looking or listening? The, the thing, thing I, I want to get back to to you and being incarcerated and yes, this, this change. Yes, sir. I was talking to the juvenile kids the other day, and you, when we was uh, 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 about a week or so ago. Yes, sir. And um, when we was talking, the thing that I told them was that. In order for you to change, that change has to happen right now. Right. Not wait until you're getting out. Not right. you're going to do this, you're going right. to do that. It happens during the process. Right. Um, was there a time in there where you thought about and said that maybe af after the fourth year or so, that maybe, hey, man, I, it, it's time for a change, man. Well, I had became institutionalized. Like a lot of brothers and mm -hmm. sisters, they go in there as rebels and they have to conform or either gonna stay locked up you know right. an OG came by my cell he said boy you consequential I said what you talking about man he said boy you got um, uh, you got Lil Kim <laughs> you got Foxy Brown all these girls up on your wall with uh, you comfortable man, you comfortable up here boy you got a little toothpaste on your little yeah, pictures and stuff look, yeah, yeah, you, you got, got, the, got, set got up. the checkerboard on your toilet <laughs> board so you got you the, boy, boy, your mattress look like you at the motel yeah, seats you all tucked in. Boy, you yeah, got look, yeah, yeah. the major little frame yeah. and set the pictures up. So you at home, home, man. You, 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 you just your home. And then walked away. I said, I stopped. I looked at all them pictures. Man, I started ripping all that <laughs> stuff off the wall. I started ripping. All, I said, man, I want to remind myself that this is jail. <laughs> Yeah, this home. this ain't my home. I done got two cars up in here. Uh uh, this is not my spot. Man, it, yeah, I never heard that before. I so no, no, no. I get it because so, I've seen it. it. Yeah. I've seen it. You've yeah. seen it, right? Yeah. So so that was one. Of, you know, and, and after I had that talk with myself, that was that transition. Yeah, yeah. Cleansing you up. Yeah, and that's when I start preparing myself spiritually. I had I knew I had to be on a spiritual diet because the war is not physical. You can live five hundred pounds. Yeah. And still be lost. Yeah, yeah. It, the muscle is your spirit. Mm. Whatever you digest spiritually is going to be your perspective on the world. Whatever you digest in your mouth is how you're going to be able to walk in the world. Mm. See what I'm saying? So you have to keep yourself on a spiritual diet. You got to spend time with God. And that's that's what I started doing. I started, I read the Torah, the Bible, and I read the uh, Quran. That's what's up. You know what I'm saying? I started reading different authors and just taking my mind out of that, across that fence. I wasn't locked up no more because my spirit was free. Amen. I already knew Amen. what I was going to do. I knew I was going to become a game counselor. That's what I ended up becoming. I, I started yeah. working the shelter. I knew that I had to go back where people were beginning to go through what I had already been through right, and share yeah. my testimony to inspire them. I knew my per I found my purpose in life. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I, I, I've been a star all my life, you know, football, basketball, you know, but I knew my stage – was in front of the loss. Man, man, I, I, I just love your story. When I when I even started looking at cotton pickers and the, the, the way your story was lining out for me, I said I, I had to have you on the show, man, because you, you, you represent our people, man. man they and, and your me. music, your music is so, it, it's conscious <laughs> music. Yeah, but I mean, you know. I like it. But you know? one thing I try not to do, though, you know, I, I try not to, I don't know if I can say this word on here, the K-R-A-C-K-E-R-S word. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, you can say it. I, okay, cracker. I try not to say cracker ass, cracker ass, cracker ass in my music because God is about love, it's not about hate. Yeah. I don't want to be a message of hate even yeah. though I know what they did was wrong to my people. Yeah. But, but me coming out as a, a person of hate attacking them Makes it's not just, what God gonna be proud well, of. Well, well, that makes you them. Yeah, so my thing is just to address the issue and let them know, hey man, right is right and wrong oh, is wrong. wrong. Slavery was the most horrendous crime ever been committed. You have been benefiting off the profits of slavery. You come in with a privilege called white privilege from day one. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And either you feel bad about it and you're using your 
uh, position in life to try to help heal this wound? Are you telling us to forget about it and you part of the poison? It's simple as that. Until you do right, that's the new record with me and Goody Mark, me and Cujo from Goody Mark. Until you do right by black people, no good going to come to you. Because karma is true. You reap what you sow. When no one's looking, God is always watching. The last going to be first, and the first, first going to be last. last. It's in every holy book. Our time is coming. This ain't no time to quit, black folks. We done been through all this. What you going to quit for now? That's Come it. on now. That's it. COVID-19. Hey, excited, bro. COVID-19 <laughs> separating the squares from the hustles. Real That's time. all it's doing. When Real crack time. came, everybody could hustle. All you do is go get some crack and go outside. That don't make you no hustler. That's it. Now we're going to find out how much grind you really got. Mm -hmm, Can you mm -hmm. switch your, your occupation to a virtual grind? You know what I'm saying? I'm saying? Where's your faith at now? I don't need no damn mass. I got God. Is you all crazy? Right, all right. What's wrong with them people? My faith. How in the world can, excuse my language, a fart go through your pants, but they don't think a damn or, or disease in there ain't going to come through a mask? Is you crazy? <laughs> <laughs> Man, that shit hurt my ears, man. I ain't wearing no, I wear these, man. Like I go in the bank like John Dudge. Can I, can I get a withdrawal? I, I love that part. I go in there like this. Can I, how y'all doing this morning? Can I get a withdrawal? <laughs> I, I, I take pictures all in the bank. Y'all in the bank getting a withdrawal like John Dudge. I mean, you know. It's crazy. <laughs> it is yeah, crazy yeah. for people to really. What you said makes a lot of sense when you yeah. think about it. It's like, okay, what are we fighting against? What? How does this thing really affect the community yeah. what is really going on with it i don't yeah. think people ever got the just of it i think it's a bunch of confusion mm -hmm. That's all. you know and and at the end of the day you know god is not the author of confusion believe that you know he brings a realism to what he does believe that god is different than yes, what sir. we make him up to be see yes, we try sir. to put him in this box yes, i sir. call it al alabaster box yes sir we want him to be exactly what we want him to be yeah but he's different yeah. He's he's bigger than what we could ever think of ass. Yes, sir. So it's a totally different ball game with God. So God is totally different. True story. Than what people try to make him out to be. True story. You know, he he, he not who you, hey, you better think again. And he might not be on your time. But he's gonna be right. But he's gonna be right on time. Yes, sir. Yeah. We know that. We found that out yesterday <laughs> with that cat coming out of North Carolina, man. Shoot, man. So so the, the the film, it's a short film, right? Yo, I got four of them. This okay, the, this talk, talk to me about, about what's going on with the films. I want I want to just get into, I, I mean, go through them. Yes, sir. Let's talk about them. So, so in 2009, I released my first film about a girl basketball team. They had just won the championship and my climb was high. The boys had been winning everything for 36 years. The girls finally won something, um, the championship. But I covered... You know, that was when I was looking for a story, and I read it in the um, newspaper about these girls. I said, that's it right there. How'd you get the budget for that? Well, I just went on the radio, read my mouth, and I found out about Indiegogo and GoFundMe. Okay. So, you know, I, I created an Indiegogo campaign. I um, made a, uh, a synopsis, and I took a picture, you know, and told them what I was trying to do. And I reached out to everybody I knew, and I know, you know, quite a few people. I said, if I can get $10 from each one, that's about 5000 Wow. Mm -hmm. So I, I, that was my mark, but I got more than that. Wow. So the story was about four girls, and, and I, I didn't cover the championship on the court. What I covered was the triumph off the court. Right. Because in Oakland, it ain't never been a strip club. It ain't going to be no strip clubs. They because, don't play that. The okay. movie The Mac was for real. Okay. There's two sides of Oakland, the Huey Newton, Black Panther, and the Pimpin' and the Pantry. They out there on International Boulevard right now. That's why Too Short can so be so articulate about his – Art because he see it every day. Mm. You 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 see girls out there, sex workers that was in high school. Wow, with you with no shame. They come from them kind of households. Either they, they they their uncle and mom and daddy was part of the Black Panthers, or they was players and pimps, mm. and and it's acceptable. So my thing was how do these how do these girls get from their household, you know, with that avoiding these teenage to want to be pimps avoiding the potholes that young women deal with as their hormones changing, they having to deal with, you know, somebody got just got killed, you know, that they know and all that, to make it to school, then study hard enough to, to get the level of grades to be on the team, then practice hard enough to be a star to then stand out. That's what wow. I covered. That wow. was a real triumph right there. That is. So it's called I Just Want a Ball because everybody in the hood want a ball. Yeah. So I said, I just want a ball, the wow. metaphoric way. All four of the girls I cover now, they want scholarships to go to junior colleges. They doing good. We pitching it right now to a network wow. to be a um, TV That's series. Great. That was my first one. 
I really didn't know what I was doing. I never went to film school. No. Um, I just asked a few questions. I always wrote the treatments to the videos for every group I was in or created. Wow. And I just did the same thing. The second one, uh, I met this guy named Bishop. But how long did it take you from the moment you had the idea to <clears throat> filming to, t to, to get it all done? Probably about nine months. Because so, I used the same team that I did to shoot my videos. Mm -hmm. They knew what they was doing. I just went and told them I want, I'm going to make a film, a short film. And I told them the idea, and they pretty much laid the um, formula out. Anybody listening right now, I'm finna give you the formula. A short film is only, you get interviews, you get B-roll, which is scanning mm -hmm. the scenery of what your story pertains. Then you get uh, expertise on it, somebody that knows something about the subject, and you get some statistics, and then you do the narration over the B-roll. Wow. Okay. And that's the four elements right there of any documentary film. You can go back and look and you're going to see them four elements. Wow. You can get, you can usually get it done for $3,000 and a short film can be from two minutes to 40 something minutes. And the wow. great thing about it, it's like a mixtape. You generate a buzz in the industry before, before you being able to capture a story from a certain angle. Mm -hmm. you, get, you, you put it in film festivals and then you get the accolade, the lower leaf to put on the outside of your media kit, of your DVD, and that gives you the credentials. And then your name start ringing. Wow. Mm. You done created a buzz. Wow. And they actually, because see, every, you can be in a room with 500 people, they don't see the same story that That's you right. see. If, you got, right. if you're got, if you a conceptual visionary like me, I catch lightning in the bottle, I've been doing it my whole life. Wow. See what I'm saying? So that's, you know, that's just the gift God gave me. Do you ever sleep? I don't sleep. I used to sleep because in a pit of tension. people like you who always sleep. getting ideas and stuff I like sleep. that. I, I don't sleep. see them sleeping. I don't sleep. Since here goes my um, to-do list right here today. I do not go to sleep until this is on my until this is on my nightstand, wherever I'm at. Right, just something. And all completed. All completed. Where, where you at, E? Right there. Boss out. Yeah, right there. Got to do it. Yeah, because, you know, no house has been built without a blueprint. I used to smoke too much weed. I've been, you know, forgot I'm going to be a billionaire. You know what I'm saying? You, you got to have, they say stick to the script. If you ain't got no script, what you going to stick to? Mm -hmm. That's wild. You know what I'm saying? You have to have something to look at to keep you navigated on what you're trying to do. You know what I'm saying? Even if it's three things, at least you can pull it out and look at it. At least you can wake up and see it on your wall. See, I go in these places, these distribution companies, record labels, I, I be like a bank camera. I'm looking around like this. The man talking to him, I'm like, oh, yes, sir. <laughs> Yes, sir. Uh -huh. Yes, sir. I'm looking at everything they got doing and the way they got it structured. All I see is chalkboards, chalkboard with numbers on it, to do lists. And I said, okay. My whole apartment, that's how all my apartments look. I got stickums everywhere on the refrigerator, on the that's cabinets. Everywhere got stickums, except for the bathroom. Yeah. Because you have it's goals and aspirations. Goals and aspirations, but the main thing is focus and discipline. No one has been financially secure and successful without being disciplinary in their life. Discipline is the key to success. If you don't control yourself, something or somebody will. I don't care what kind of camera it is. You can buy it from the doll store or you can buy it from Macy's. If it ain't focused, it ain't gonna take no good picture. That's right. You know what I'm saying? So that's just, that's just, that's just the glitz of it, man. So my second film, I met this dude. He had um, picked cotton for 18 years um, in Mississippi and never got paid. He migrated to Oakland, California. So my friend was uh, called a cotton picker, and it was about the con game called sharecropping. See, people don't understand, if you was in Florida, Georgia, North Carolina, South Carolina, your people migrated up to Philly, D.C., and New York. If you was in Mississippi and Alabama, most of them went to Gary, Indiana for the steel mill, and then Detroit and Chicago, well, Detroit for the auto industry. If you was in Texas and Louisiana, most of your people went out west for the Navy shipyards. That was a migration of our people, but it happened after the frustration uh, of, of sharecropping because after slavery, they were supposed to split the money with us at the end of the year. But we didn't really know how to read or write. So they came up and said, oh, nah, hey, man, we kind of short this year. Uh, Charlie, but, uh, look here, y'all stayed there last year for free. We Y'all going to stay there again. Uh, we going to try to stay again one more year. Yes, we is. And hopefully it don't rain too much. You know, uh, we, we, we going to double up next time, next year. That's called finessing. That's called finessing. For dangling, twangling, twisting, whatever you want to call it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And then finally they said, man, hey, the hell with this. I'm going to go to Chicago up there with my cousins there working on the railroad and up there in Detroit where they fixing them. 
Because they got because we only knew the South. It's safe from the dirt to the day. No slave ship come to Chicago or New York City or California. We all black folks. We from the South. That's so mm-hmm. true. And let me tell you something. They don't understand why the South went. I told them twenty something years ago. I I was in Greensboro, North Carolina, where my mama them from, and I had a TV show called The Dirty Dirty All Down South Rap. I said, man, the South finna take over. They said, why you say that? I said, because the youth be around each other all day at all different kind of events. If it's any kind of beef, they be done handle that by the time the concert comes. In Chicago, L.A., Oakland, and a lot of places, Detroit, only time they come together is for a concert, the whole city, I mean, from different hoods. In, in the South, where all them colleges at, they go to the step show together, they go to the basketball game, the football game, they go to school together. So if you beefing with somebody, by the time the concert come, you already took care of that. Yeah, see yeah, what I'm yeah, saying. So, so the the mergers of the youth gathering down south is what has allowed the south urban music to 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 be so prominent, man. Uh huh, uh huh. And they and they can't they ain't gonna be able to let it go. No, I agree, hundred you know percent. So I, I I remember a lot of times we we in the south we we definitely rode with the west coast sound man yeah. it was a we we felt i mean the love man like the yeah. two shorts and yeah. all those guys ice cubes uh, most of the guys man they really really yeah. you know that like you with Goody Mob, like we we click. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like well, it was my teachers, man. Yeah, Goody they Mob, were. NWA, Too Short, Public Enemy, Common Sense. You know, um, Pop, Spice One. You know, X Clan. My mom died. I was seventeen, man. Died from cancer. My best friend, and you know, it was, it was hard, man. And I listened to Guess Who for about two years. Did yeah. you have a father in your life? My dad was a Ron Kingpin in Oakland. Both of them was from Greensboro, North Carolina. My dad went to Travis Air Force Base in um, California. Then he went back and got his mama. His high school sweetheart was with my mom. And he was a pilot in the Vietnam War. So the soldiers in the Vietnam War, most of them came back as heroin addicts because of the traumatization. They started eating them poppies, poppy plants. Yeah. Mm. That was pure heroin. So that's how the that's that. how the heroin yeah, that's how the heroin emerged in urban urban America in the early 70s and, and late 60s because all the soldiers came back as dope fiends. But my dad and like a few more, like Frank Lucas, they was pilots. So my dad wasn't on the ground. So when he got out, he started driving a bus and Cali couldn't make it. He went back to Vietnam and got 10 keys of hair on. Oh, he and, did like Frank Lucas. Yeah, he did like Frank. Well, I, I ain't never lived in the projects. I always stayed in mansions outside San Francisco, Marvin Gaye. And uh, uh, Marvin Gaye, what's the other dude named Marvin Gaye? And OJ used to be in my household snorting cocaine. It was my wow. dad's partners. You know what I'm saying? Chucka Khan was his girlfriend. She was tore up then before she went overseas, but that was his girlfriend. My daddy looked like Richard Rouch. I used to think my dad was Shaft. Looked just like him. You know, they gunned him down in the streets of Oakland. You know, when they did it. <clears throat> I wanted to go kill them Columbians, but my grandma explained that he had destroyed a lot of households. That was a part of the game he, he chose to be in. Mm-hmm. How old was he when, he when that happened? My dad was about like 40, about 49. So you had to spend time with him when your mom passed. I mean, my dad never taught me nothing. He was in false enforcer. He taught me to smell good and stay manicured, and he taught me that by watching him. He yeah. was on the road all the time. He was on the road, and he was an enforcer. Mm. So that's all he knew. was he, he, he wasn't a teacher, you know what I'm saying? But he was a great provider. I had the best of everything. And it was crazy. Every every year he had whatever kind of Fleetwood it was, you know what I'm saying? Years I used to ride in the front seat with him through Oakland, through Frisco, clean, you know, Bro Hams, years later, a uh, uh, sex worker gave me the name Fleetwood. I was wow. about to ask you know where that name came from. Yeah, so yeah, who was, was that gave you that name? A sex, sex worker. worker. Sex worker gave the boy yeah. the name Fleetwood. I was a dope boy. And she how was, old were you at the time? I was 19. She walked Fleetwood. up and gave me a bunch of money, you know, and I was like, you know. She said, what's your name? I said, whatever. You're going to keep giving this money? She said, I'm going to call you Fleetwood because you hard but you smooth. I said, all right. And I walked away. And you kept that name ever since. Yeah, well, all right, but it's smooth, baby. Yeah, yeah, so, you know, that You've was You've been through so much, and you know so many people, and you you have so much information in that head of yours. But that's God, though. Because I was, I was signed to Rough Rider in 99. Just like we in this room, it was me, DMX, Lox. Really? Um, Eve and Dragon. We was all in Brooklyn, on Nordstrom and Atlantic and Big Yo Hood. And I had a group called The Foundation from North Carolina. You know what I'm saying? They gave me 1500 for a production deal, but I was wild. I was wild. I was gang banging, shooting at the police, getting Rodney King, selling dope. Wow. But that's what they liked about it because my music was real aggressive mm-hmm. yeah. and it was Southern, you know what I'm saying? But I wasn't focused. And I, it crushed me. Just like uh, when I went to prison in Minneapolis, Minnesota, R.L. from the group Next was in my living room. 
right in front of love. I knew he was gonna blow. You know what I you got? When I knew he was like Michael Jackson. I used to go to his mama's house every day because I had I was going to audio engineering school. And I had my first label, Steel Hustle Music. And I was trying to sign this little dude, but I had to sign his mama because he's only fifteen. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? You can't sign a minor. Right. So I used to go over his mama's house and try to butter her up and you know what I'm saying? <laughs> trying to make trying to make the deal happen. But Jimmy Jam and Terry Lewis then was at him. <laughs> so they're like, who was this little boy? I had waves then. I brushed my waves out and the penitentiary stressed out. <laughs> but you know, they was like, man, you ain't even on the level of people calling us, pretty much. They ain't right. say it like that, but that's what it was. But you know, to this day he got love for me all he does? Yeah. yeah, you know, cause he, you know, I took a liking to him, told him to stay out the way. His brother was completely different from him, Jatano, but I knew R.L. was going to make it. Wow. Know? And they came out with Butter Love, and they came out with Standing So Close. They were sending shots out to me on the radio. It was devastating, though, man. Wow. But the uh, way how you are and the discipline, the way how disciplined you are and the focus yeah. you are, did that come after you did all that, the five years in prison, or did, or you had that in you before? Well, I always had a to-do list. It my, seemed like you always was dealing with it. But, I, you know, to be honest with you, I, I, I carried the – burden of my mom's death for like 15 years because I was in trouble all the time. I always got A's and B's, but I stayed in the vice principal office. I stayed in juvenile because I was trying to be like my dad, and my mom never did not come get me. And my mom was a welfare worker. I used to play with food stamps when I was little. I thought it was Monopoly money. <laughs> but her sisters and them, all of them was in New York, Philly, D.C., and when my mom died, she they all came down, and I heard them in her room like that boy worried of the mom of death. You know, and I wow. knew I knew I didn't never used to go to the hospital because I ain't like seeing my mama like that. She had cancer; they cut her breasts off, her hair fell right. out, her stomach yeah. got big. I'm like, man, I ain't gonna see my mama like that, you know. And well, it bothered me for a long time, bro. It cause will because I, I felt like I, I maybe I did. No, you, know what you I'm didn't. I, I, I can I tell you a story yeah. the same way. Yeah. My mom died of cancer, and um, I never told this before though. But a lot of people wonder why, like, I stopped drinking, like, yeah. and. Uh, and, and and just kind of cold turkey when, yeah. when I went through some stuff. Right. And I uh, never drunk again, but I remember one thing. You know, I remember the last time I seen my mom, she had cancer. Right. And, and the last thing she said to me was, um, she was like, you the smartest child I got. Why do you right. Why do you always be drunk? I was drunk and right. throwing up. I threw up in the bathroom. And, you right. know, they're supposed to be around germs and right. stuff like right. that. So I always had this thing where I felt like, Man, if I hadn't threw up in her, maybe she'd have lasted longer. In my yeah, mind, I'm yeah, telling you. Yeah. And it kind of affected me in a yeah, way where yeah. I felt like, and she was 44. Yeah. Um, I was 23, 24 at the time. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it, it does affect you yeah. when you lose somebody like that. And yeah. you and you know uh, you was dealing with them. But yeah. I think God is the ultimately, when I, when I grew, I yeah. understood that God has an ultimate plan. Yeah. And it, it really is not about what we... We, we think these things because mm -hmm. we put out mentally. The right. Bible says, so is a man thinketh, so, so is he, he. Right. in his heart. Right. So that, that thing right there is real. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So if you can put things in your heart, in yeah. your mind, right. and, and put yourself in a corner, right. and, and, and it's not even the real. It's not real. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So you got to be, you got to be, you, you got to be humble enough to say, God was the one that let these things. See, like, we, like we said yesterday, everything begins in the mind. Definitely, yeah, That's definitely. Really all it it's it's yeah. mental. Yeah, yeah. It's just all about but, what you but believe I in. Definitely, I, I, I sit here and listen to you talking. Yeah. Every time you say your mom had cancer, you just keep punching him, keep yeah. punching him, keep punching him. Because my mom had cancer; yeah. she died yeah. early on. You yes, know, sir. how old was your mother when she passed? She was forty-two. See, yeah. mine was forty-four. Yeah, and, and I, you know, I asked a lot of people why. You know, why God do that to my mama like that? Tear her body up and do all that. To yeah, me, yeah. Know? And my mom had, said that they. My mom actually said that they, they killed her. Really, she was yeah. saying that, that they didn't, you know, know what they were doing on the surgery. My brother told me. I, she never told me that, but my older brother told me that. Yeah. You know, so it's a lot of times. I think a lot of times they don't know. They they just going through trying things. You know. So go yeah. ahead. I'm sorry. I so cut you so off. no, it's all right. So anyway, you know, um, when, when, you, when the queen was asking me about, you know, my disciplinary. Um, where I am now, my yeah, focus. I yeah. wasn't, and then I was dealing with that bird, and that's when I started smoking crack and weed. We call them yeah. Grimmies in the Bay. Yeah, that was, they, I, what we call them Primos down yeah, primo. here. I was running from you were reality. Primoing. Yeah, I was running from reality and stayed drunk and wild, but I always was gifted with my pen because I used to fly back and forth on airplanes my whole life. So I always had stories in my head to tell. You know, teachers said, "What did y'all do this summer?" I was one of the first ones. Raise my hand. <laughs> 
And I, I go straight to the class. Oh, we was about Fisherman's Wharf, and I seen these big old ships, and we seen the Blue Ocean, and I seen the Black Panthers, and they came and got me and took me to the breakfast. And I had, so when I was in Cali, I would tell the homies about North Carolina. When I was in North Carolina, I would tell the little homies about Cali. Yeah. I always was a storyteller. They loved all your stories, yeah. I bet. So I, you know, I never been scared of the stage, man. So, yeah, I mean, one of the reasons I go so hard is because I want my mama to be proud of me. I know she I know is. I know she is. Now, you know, she always been regardless, but, you know, you know, she was a welfare worker, so one of my aspirations is to build Miss Betty's house, a 24-hour safe haven where people can come, shower, you know, watch TV, hear some spiritual music. We're not going to force you to be on case, man. They got them in Frisco. They call drop-in centers. Yeah. You come. I don't went in them many times. Feet hurting. You know what I'm saying? I ran off with somebody's sack. You go in there. You sit down. Take your shower. You get some hygiene products. You sit there 24 hours. Then you go back out to the block. Or either if you want some case management, you get it in the morning. So I'm going to create something, you know, God's will. Call let me, let me, let me, let me, let me ask you a like question. That something, I, something that crossed my mind because of uh Post Charleston White put up something because he was in Atlanta this past weekend. Yes, sir. And he said that the water boys, uh -huh. they run out to the car with the water. Uh -huh. And he was saying that he couldn't live in Atlanta. I'm like, but my boy Fleetwood going to Atlanta. Yeah. And I think he was saying because it's so much, you know, he said, you you know, we need to get these boys some lawnmowers. Uh -huh. We need to get these boys some, you know, some, some show these boys how to get, you know, jobs, you know, with, uh -huh. with, with, like you was talking about yesterday, mm -hmm. like air conditioning and, and, you know, roofing and right. whatever, you know, show them how to do something that's going to show them how to, how to eat so they don't have to be out there. Right. Trying to stand and sell water. Right. Well, so, I mean, is, 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 there, is there anything that you feel, what would you do in a situation where you see a need? Is there anything, or would you just sit back? No. I mean, anytime you see somebody out there selling water, they're a natural salesman, they can sell houses. They just got to change their product. Okay. If you're getting a dollar, you just got to change the product where you're getting $10,000 yeah. co commission. That's a picture of my mom and my okay. daughter right there. You know, and, um, you yeah. know. That's you know that's that's that's, all that's right, what man. it is, man. So I'm going to the south to make it felony friendly. Like I said, the bay. Okay, is, so that's your, that's what you're gonna do. I'm gonna make it felony friendly because see, in the south, if you got a felony, you tow up. Yeah. In the Bay Area, like my boy just did eight years. He got out three months later. He worked at the county jail, making forty two dollars an hour. Okay. That would have never happened in the south. No. See what I'm saying? You know. So the first thing I'm gonna do is attack that question on applications and rental applications. Have you ever been convicted of a felony? That's illegal. That's unconstitutional. How can the United States government actually have you ever been convicted of a crime and they was behind the most horrendous crime ever mm. been committed with slavery? That's hypocrisy. It has wow. to be addressed. So you can't ask for a second chance as a U.S. government if you won't give people a second chance. Wow. See what I'm saying? So we used a thing called Ban the Box. Me and Boots Rally did it along with um, All of Us and None and uh, Legal Services for Prisoners with Children 10 years ago. We, we we fought and fought and fought and, and fought against Proposition 21. We got that. You can't ask nobody that until the interview. You can't just shut nobody down on the application. Wow. Now, you can ask them that during the interview, but at least you got to give them an interview. Give them an interview. So that's the first thing I'm going to attack. You know, I got some people waiting on me, and uh, I'm not going to try to take over Atlanta. I'm just going to be a spark. Uh, I want to be a spoke in the wheel that's turned against injustice and racism. By the time they're going to find, I've been on the biggest radio station down there. They're going to find out I got a record with Cool Joe and Goody Ma. They're going to find out about my book. And all. But I don't want to go down like that, down there like that. Because then I'm standing in line with the rest of the people pursuing mm -hmm. stardom. I'm going down there as a community activist to help my people. Yeah. When, yeah. I, when they realize I'm real about what I'm doing, Come they're going to support me. I already got my assistants. We call in every black businesses that register and ask them. Are you willing to hire ex offenders? I got seven right now, seven people. So I'm going to meet them as soon as I get down there. Then I'm going to stand in front of the parole and probation office. Anybody come out, hey man, what's happening, bro? I'm Fleetwood. You got a job? Oh, you ain't? oh I got somebody. Go over here to Miss Bed's restaurant. All right. Tell her Fleetwood sent you, bro. I got you. You feel me? If you need any kind of transportation tokens or something to work, you, as soon as you get the job, you call me. Feel me? So that's that's my MO. That's how I get down. That's what I do. Yeah. So are you doing that in every city or are you just we doing it? We in seven states right now. Uh -huh. But I'm starting in Atlanta and then what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go up to Virginia and come all the way back to Texas. Because you're going around to these places and doing that and when you go to these places, you need to probably try to find um, people who have like mind passion like you. Definitely. So you can create that in that city. So even when you move on, you have that still sitting there in True. that city helping people True. because there are people in each city who would love to do what you're doing, but don't know how to. Right. You know what I mean? Yes, so if you can find those people 
and say, okay, this is what we're going to do. Come with me. Let's do this. Let's yes, do ma'am. that. Yes, ma'am. You know what I mean? So yep. you don't feel like you're stretched. Right. And that's right. what, I mean, that's what Archivius Armstrong, being in, from, from North Carolina, okay. and, uh, uh, um, you know, right. you, and like I said, I wanted Charleston to be here tonight because you three guys and myself, we all have similar you know, right. background. Right. And, we change. And we, 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 have we, and we can help. Yeah. yeah. You right, know, and, and he's talking about touring and stuff. So right. God can put together a whole different situation because right. he knows about it. That's his passion. Okay. He right. can call on people like you and yes, I sir. and Charleston and, and be able to do stuff to where it's going to bring the people out. Definitely. And that's that that's something that we, we you know, I thought about. So No, I was going to say, and I'm um, like he said yesterday, you weren't here, but they had a job fair, you know, back there where it was only for convicted felons. There the you whole go. job fair. There you go. And was that in yeah, Charlotte, in Charlotte, Charlotte North yeah, Carolina. Yeah. Queen and City. I thought that was an awesome, you know, thing to do. And right. I feel like every city should do that, just uh-huh. have job fair for that right. person. Right. Then you know that people who are coming offering these jobs, mm. they already know what they're expecting and what they're Definitely. trying to get into. Definitely. So. Well, you know, that's 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 an MO and, and mode of the bay. You know, that's what we do. And like when I tell talk to people, I tell them first of all, you've been in jail, you ain't got no tickets. Or you know, you ain't, you ain't got no speeding tickets. You ain't got no DI DUI, you you've been in jail. Get in the transportation industry. Yeah. Yeah. Get, go get your CDLs, get on the road, you're on mm-hmm. your own boss, or go drive a cab. If you don't have no sex crime, get or elderly crime, they're gonna hire you. You know, I can drive a cab in the city. I can drive a train in the city. You know what I'm saying? So, get, or, you know, use the fact that you have changed your redemption, your testimony as a way um, to inspire others because people can't go to school for what you don't went to school for. That's so true. The youth ain't going to respect their stories. Let me ask you this. I'm filming. You told me the first two films. Yes, what sir. Was the, what was the last Okay, two? my fault. So That's okay. The, the, second, the third film is about co-parenting. Okay. And it's called Zephaniah. Okay. And it's about the fact, as a man, you cannot lift your head up and brush your teeth and call yourself a man if you don't respect the woman who has had your child. If you leave your children, I don't care if she threw grits on you like Al Green, she snitched on you, whatever. <laughs> you cannot leave your children and call yourself a man. That's so true. Because it was that woman and you that brought that child to had unprotected sex. That child didn't... Put in no application to come in this world. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah so, so how are you gonna leave your babies and call yourself? I don't care what that woman done did, yeah. bro. You got trip. to humble yourself. Ask God to take the hatred out of your heart. Wow. I had never went through the baby mama drama, drama, my baby with the baby mama. <laughs> <laughs> Man, that is a monster. Yeah, yeah, because yeah. Because that woman know how to push your buttons. Exactly. But until you can close your mouth and say, "Sister, you know what? Thank you. I pray for you." Until you can do it like that and say, "You know what? I'm sorry." For hurting you, whatever way you feel I hurt you, but I thank you for having my baby. You know, I'm always out of love for you, no matter what. Until you can do that and it's genuine, you will not grow as a man. That's so true. You could, I, don't, I refuse to have that poison. I don't call it. That's the mother of my daughter. I don't even use that term, baby mama. I'm telling these niggas, don't call me no baby daddy. I'm the father of my child. All right, now. I'm a father. I ain't no baby daddy. Don't even call me that. Say that for somebody who's neglecting their child. So my sec- third film is called Zephaniah, which is my daughter's name, and it That's means God's name. treasure. It's the 36 Bible. That's a 36, beautiful name. Thank you, sister. It's the 36th book in the Old Testament. Wow. And it actually was a man prophet, but I like the ring of it, Naya. So it said, I said it sounded like a girl. So I, you know, I said I, I asked her, could I name her that? She said, yeah. So me and her broke up, man. You know, I'm, we ain't cut from the same cloth. You know, I'm 57. She was when I met. I was 54. She was. Uh, I was 53. She was 32. It wasn't an age difference. It was just she had the stories I had. But so we I, just. It just. It but just. You it, have custody of the. Of the no, we don't have custody. We we just we have just an agreement. Keep, okay, we just have an up. agreement. You know, right now, you know, we ain't got them people in our business. That's what. You, that's I like that. Yeah, and I just told her, look, you know, she's a, a, a aspiring celebrity hairstylist, so she's able to get health care. I said, that's all you gotta do. Any extracurricular activities my daughter pursued, dancing, karate, you know, piano. I take care of that. I buy all her clothes. Your two days off, she with you. My two days off, she with me. The other three days, she had to babysit the menu, split it in half. So it's been cool. It's been some bumps, ups and downs still, you know. We still have arguments, but I don't. I told her I ain't going to carry it over to the next day, and I ain't going to call you out your name. That's it. But I might not. I ain't gonna agree with everything you do now, neither. Mm. Feel me? So, but I, I'm gonna let you know something I don't agree with. I'm gonna try to do it <clears throat> in, a, in a respectful manner. And sometimes we get to the point 
I say, hey, man, we don't need to talk right now. Let's just communicate via text. Because mm-hmm. your tone um, upsets me. My tone might upset you. But you can't, you know, you can type text in the capital letters. They say that's hollering. But, you know, um, you know, we text a lot. So, anyway, that's what the third movie's about. It's about co-parenting, and it's called Zephaniah. The fourth movie is my second film installment of the Cotton Picker film series, and it's called Gimme Mines. Okay. My mule, my 40 acres of broken promise wow. of reparation. I got my big sister. She like my big sister. Her name is London Breeze. She's a male of San Francisco, straight from the projects, worked her way all the way up. And uh, she stars in it along with the hip-hop journalist, world-renowned Davey D. And it's just about who made the promise to us, why they, why was the Civil War so important? How did it affect slavery? What other nationalities have received reparations? And what do we have to do with African Americans to receive our reparations? Wow. So it's based on that. It just came out three weeks ago, well received. Um, I haven't did a lot of film screenings due to COVID, but Atlanta's wide open. I'm definitely going down there to do a lot of film screenings. I, I have it in a couple of film festivals. I've been um, you know, selling it online. I had to reinvent my hustle through Cash App. So, you know, that's it. I got a film coming out, Cinco de Mayo, Brown Babies about Latino children locked in detention centers. Then I got a street film with Devin the Dude, which actually is my first improv film. <clears throat> Come out July, August. It's called What the Streets Taught Me. You um, already done it? Yeah. So you and Devin work together? Yeah, I got a hit record with him right now. Is it's he called over, Focus. He's in Houston. Houston. Yeah. You was down there doing it? Yeah, I did it. I did it in Houston. I flew, I just shot it in two days. Wow. It was the first one I did in prom. I got scripts, but my boy JT, the bigger figure, told me quit going off of scripts because a lot of times people can't talk the way they can read. I mean, people read the scripts and try to say it exactly how you wrote it and don't sound natural because wow. he done did 70 films just on improv. So you just do the drag line. You just do whether or not it's outside. A drag line is three elements. You, at the beginning, it's going to say interior or, or exterior. That means either the, the scene going to happen outside or inside. Then the next thing is going to say where it's going to happen at. Then the third thing is going to say whether it's day or night. And then you just put a sentence up under that, what's going to happen in the scene. So he said, just do that and let him do it naturally. It's called improv. So that's what we did with Devin the Dude. And also um, I recorded a record with him, Focus, at the time. Shot the uh, video. We just got to chop it up now. Where, um, okay, so so where do you put these films out? On YouTube or on, on j- j- how do how do we get them? Well, on well, Amazon? Or well, how? Well, right now we're seeking a distribution deal, but mostly, okay. I, mostly, see, this is the first film, really, you know, that's a film. But so mostly my short films, I just put them in film festivals to get okay. the credentials, you know, because film festivals give you credibility. You get quotes from the, whoever the film festivals is. You can put them on the back of your DVD okay. or you can put it in your newspaper, okay. your media kit. So that's really what I've been seeking now with this Devin the Dude film. Um, we all go seek some type of distribution Um Donald Trump just pardoned my big brother, the godfather of black entertainment. So we finna have our own BET party in like 90 days, you know. Um, Who so was that? Michael Who? Harry O'Harris. We started Death Row Records. We shut Death Row down. Um, we started Denzel Washington Carrillo, sent Harry Berry to acting school, Blair Underwood. We all, all Battle Cat Publishing, Top Dog, who's Kendrick Lamar signed to. That's the little cousin. That's why you never hear nothing about him because Mike being his ear, you know what I'm saying, um, Jimmy Iovine and... Um, my ex-lawyer, David Kennedy, been the one going to the parole board to keep my big brother locked up for these 32 years because my brother is a, uh, a corporate mastermind from the projects. He produced the first black play on Broadway called Checkmate, which starred a youngster named Denzel Washington. Wow. And then, you know, somebody did something to the family and took them back to the streets, you know what I'm saying? And um, my brother been gone a long time. Mm. But he home now. I got a song called He Home Now. He home oh, now. Wow. And uh, I just was with him about a month ago in L.A. We was at Lamert Park. He happy. He's strong. He's spiritual, you know. And, you know, he just said, little bro, I'm proud of you. You've been doing good. All I hear is good. You just keep doing it. Act like I ain't home. I'm going to meet you halfway. So I text him every morning. I talk to him once or twice a week. I try not to bother him, but he's a godfather. They can Google him. They know who Mike is. Harry O. Wow. They know who he is. Actually, Lydia got a... His former ex-wife has a restaurant in Houston, in Sugar Land. She stuck with him a long time, and then, you know, they got the $100 million and things went away. But, um, you know, that's who behind everything I do. He green light everything. I don't, do, I don't release nothing until he hear it. Mm-hmm. Nothing. Just out of respect. Out of respect. It yeah. goes a long ways, yeah, man. Yeah, so that's, that's what's going to happen with the films. They're going to go through his channel, or either he's going to tell me where to push it. You know, I'm just stacking content right now. Um, my final project going to be a... 
short film I'm doing about my daughter. It's called Boobly Woobly, My Princess. Come out on Thanksgiving. Wow. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? I got a lot of footage of her. So when I get to Atlanta, you know, my first thing is going to be able to market, to do is to market this um, Latino film on um, Brown Babies. I'm going to market it from Texas all the way to Cali, you know, with the people that's fighting against ICE. And that's uh, I'm doing it for two reasons. I love Mexican people. The second reason, you know, it's wrong what they're doing. I don't feel as though it's right. How you going to tell people they can't come to San Antonio, Dallas, New, uh, Albuquerque, Phoenix, and L.A., when all them damn cities got Spanish names, that was Mexico. <laughs> so what the hell are they talking about? No, no, you're right. So, so that's you know that's what I, that's the, that's my next one coming up, and then we got um, um, what the streets taught me with Devin to do, and then Thanksgiving we got um, Boobly Woobly. Yeah, um, my prince is Zephyr Nye. Yeah, man, you know, you know, you dropping jewels on us, man, and, and every everything you've told us is I did not suspect. I, I was like, wow, you know, I was called for this interview, and I was like, man, I need to know this guy, man, and and, and it ain't nothing but God. That's all. It's bro. nothing but God, and yeah. and 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 that's all it need to be. You do everything by faith, and you and you and you, and you and you walk by faith, not by sight, anyway. True so these are the things that you do, and you just and, and, and you and, and I love hard. So as soon as you call me, and I read what I tell you, I'm like, I'm getting him. I'm being old because it's love, bro. Like yeah. uh, you, cotton pickers, I gotta have this dude, man. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And I got it serious about. It. I started calling Brian. He started calling me, asking, "Could you be on here?" I started calling real fiercely. If you go in your DM, you gonna See, I start hitting you up like yeah, I need bro. this guy on here, man. man I, and I know God I, is in the middle of it, man. man I know it. It was written twenty years ago, bro. I was gonna be on Boss Talk, man. <laughs> he was just waiting on me to get ready to come, <laughs> man. You know what I'm saying? I just, just I appreciate you for coming, man. You've been a blessing to us tonight, man. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. um, our platform, like I said, all I wish is if it's anything I can help with, if it's yeah. clothes, our own clothing store. Yeah. If it's anything, you see a a, a, a convicted felon yeah. or somebody get out of jail, they yes, need sir. something, yes, you call E, say, hey, E, I need a couple of outfits, man. I'm yeah. sending them your way. Yeah. All you got to do is say the word. Yes, sir. Same thing go for you, too, R.K. Yes, Don't leave me out of it. Let me yeah. bless somebody, too. Well, you know what I mean? That's yes, that's. Sir. And, well, Go ahead. No, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Keep no, no, no. I just say, man, yeah. just let me be a part of what you guys are doing. And if you need me to come speak, yeah. I'm there. But what I would love to do is, you know, as it, as it open up here in Texas, um, I got product, bro. You know, yeah, what I'm yeah, yeah. Let's put together a small, yeah, whatever you put, need. Put together a situation where we do a film screening, yeah. We do a book signing, yeah. And then we do, you know, go talk to some youth, and then we do a conscious uh, 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 after party, and we'll donate half the proceeds to Boss Talk. Man, and you know that's you know the saying? same I thing. I just need the venue. Hey, that's that's, it, that's what's you know what up. Do he the same way you? Y'all yeah. y'all doing the same type thing, man? And it's crazy to me. That's why I want to come together at some point. God going to put it together where Boss Talk going to yeah. bring real bosses together. Yes, we going to come back. We going to celebrate yes, and we help some passion. people together. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm talking about the guys who yeah. right. have like passions. Yeah. It's crazy to me, man. God has yeah. been sending them to us. They've been coming. It ain't no coincidence. It's not. not. And, and that's that's crazy yeah. because I, I, I it's the thing that I pray for. You know yeah. that. Mm -hmm. It's what I always ask for and it's happening. I thank God for it, bro. Brothers like you. Stand, stand up, brother, brother, like Archivius, man. You guys, man, y'all make y'all made my weekend. It's one of the best weekends you know I had in a long time, man. You know what I realize about life? The funny thing is that we pray for things, and I always tell people pray specifically. But a lot of people get opportunities in life and don't realize how to use it, how to utilize it, or realize that it's God who's sending the opportunities to you. Right. We're re realizing just like how when you say, you know your purpose, you know exactly what you need to do, you know. You know what? Because God is who gave this to you, and the same exactly. for Archivius. Right. But then you have so many people out here who God is giving them opportunities, opening their eyes, but they're not receiving it. They don't mm -hmm. realize that it's God who is doing this, yeah. and that they have a purpose in this world to to touch people. Right. People don't always get it. Right. You know what I mean? But I love the fact that we all right here are on that same page, and yeah. we're getting it. Yeah. Thank, thank it well, can, you. Know, Still sharp and steel, and one thing I learned, you know, I can't save all these niggas, but I can pray for all of them. <laughs> That's true. I ain't no lifeguard. You no, know, man, that, not at all. And you then, know? you know, confused people confuse you if you listen to them. The difference <laughs> of one fool and two fools is when you argue with one. <laughs> You know, hey, I, I, quit, I quit trying to debate with people. And one thing they debate about and love to debate about is religion. 
Yeah, you know, yeah. God sent different messages down at different periods of time. No yeah. way a Chinese man can understand Christianity. No, no, no. He speak English. But the thing you know is, I so, always say, worship God where you stand, yeah, you know, and, so. and have open mind for, open mind for knowledge, you know. Yeah. And, and God's going to get to you what's for you. Yeah, I know exactly. that because he's big enough for the job. Yeah. And when you start trying to get into heresies and yeah. trying to figure out ways to debate something yeah. that you don't truly understand, yeah. that you don't have all the understanding of, then you put yourself in a corner, you know. I believe in Christ. I'm a Christian. Christian, that's yes, what sir. I am. Yes, um, but at the end of the day, I make myself approachable to anyone who go. believes anyway. Because at go. the end of the day, I read the Quran. Yeah. I read, I've been studied Buddhism, studied right. Hinduism, there you go. studied Nawa there Buddhism. You go. There you See, go. I'm the one, I studied uh, the Jehovah Witnesses. Yes, and, and every time I studied, I got closer to Christ, to be honest with there you. you go. And that was my way that right. God touched me. Right. So at the end of the day, I never put say hey you this or you yeah. that I make myself very approachable I yeah. love everybody that's what we here for we're going to love them and, and, and we're going to love them until we get to where we need to be yes, sir. period yes, sir. and that's how you help people yes, sir. man yes, sir. hey man thank you so much for coming on the man, show man. thank you for having me man. say man and anytime you in Dallas Texas man you know you got to come back hey, to man, Boss Talk man, 101, family, baby. Man. Hey, look, I'm, gonna call, I'm trying to block my number. I got the app on my phone. I'll call you from another number. Hey, so man. <laughs> you can call me anytime, man. Hey, I want look. you. Hey, man, hey, you always hey, welcome here. Hey, man, man, hey, hey, man, like I said, man, it's so many gems you dropped here to, tonight. That wasn't me. That was no, God. no, no. It changed my life right here. Just That's some up. of the things that you told me because you, you, you don't know. Yes, Quit sir. trying to know. Everybody try to know what they gonna, the interview going to be like. You yeah. don't know. Yeah. And I'm sitting here saying, you know what, God, show me. We yes, always say that. We all, Sometimes we plan and we write down questions. So you yes. still have to do your research oh, yeah. on whoever's coming on. Right. But a lot of times we just wait for God to give us yeah, the go. questions exactly. and know how it's going to go. Well, but before you go, I'm going to ask you one more question. Please do. Oh, the top three. Please here do. we go. Please do. I, I, I need to know what is your top three artists of, of all, all time, time, dead or alive, dead or alive. any genre. Any, I'm going to break them, And I need, to get, I need to get a picture. I'm trying to get on the wall. You oh, put no, me on the I bottom of the wall. Put me on the bottom of the wall. You've been on Boss Talk. Them guys, that was my old, you know, to be honest with you, that's what I used to do when I was going out. That's all about the clothes. This is a clothing store. So okay. all of my stuff, I don't open up seven stores. And so I would do that because I wanted people to see the legitimacy of the clothes. Okay. But now it's about Boss Talk 101, baby. Okay. Okay. And they don't tell them what this wall about okay. to be like. You, well, hey, I want to get on the wall, Hey, the man. wall going to be different. The wall, yeah. This wall about to be powerful, man. Okay, okay. You know what I'm saying? That wall was the hustle. I get it, but... This wall here that we create now, because you've had everybody on this platform, man. Archivius Armstrong, Mike Jones, Sir Charles Jones, Fleetwood. Yes, you know what I'm talking about? It's going down, baby. Yes, yeah, yes, yeah. And that boy Charleston J. White. You know what yes, I'm saying? Sir. We building another whole wall. It's yes, love, baby. It's yes, love. <laughs> so we need to know your top three artists of all, of all time. time that are alive. Any yeah, genre. yeah. Um, Sade. Sade. Um, Sade. That's she was a, a bad she, that's I bad. didn't know I didn't know it was light skinned women in Africa. <laughs> I swear I didn't. I was I was in love with Sade. I said, man, this woman can sing and she is fine. Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know so she from, she originally from from Africa. Yeah, she's from Africa, I think. Wow. Uh, uh, she was she's from Africa and grew up in London, I think. Okay. Yeah. Who was your number two? Number two is O'Shea Jackson. O'Shea Jackson. Uh, and then the third one gonna have to be Todd Shaw. He taught me how to rap. Todd Shaw, too short, too short. Oh, that's his real so, name. So okay. you and y'all really, really, really. That's my partner. Man, I gotta get him on the show. I just talked to Banks. I'm not and, gonna play with y'all, nah, man. I just talked to. T Don't and, do this, man. Nah, Aunt Banks, Aunt Banks, staying on uh, toast. I just talked. Aunt Banks, Aunt is, Banks. He's supposed to be the, uh, doing the score for uh, what the streets taught me for the Devon film. I just talked to him. When was it? Two days ago. We, really? Yeah. It's a lot of people in Oakland from. Uh, they live in Arizona. I'm, hey man, I'm I'm lo I'm locked in. Yeah, you know this. This is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna get them on the show. Call me. Hey, I, you know who I'm trying to get? Who real, is? real for real. Who? Is? And, and, uh, DJ Quick. Oh, that ain't nothing. Now I, I need that cat, man. That ain't nothing. I mean, the thing is, well, I don't know about traveling, but phone interviews. Yeah, I yeah, you, yeah, I yeah, yeah. No, we do virtual. virtual. We do virtual. Yeah. We do virtual. Yeah. Yeah. But I gotta. Yeah, I need to get with I these got cats, man. Quick. I, you like know, I said, I put in too much work, and I ain't never gave up. They respect my grind. 
but I've been you, this thing too long. You man. and uh, uh, my boy, Young Bleed. You say you and Bleed, him. That's my partner. We man, did that's what we talked. Yeah, we, we did, did a virtual with him. Yeah. But I talk with him daily too. That's yeah. my partner too. Yeah, Bleed. That's my boy. I love that dude, man. That's about Fleetwood. I'm gonna ask him. He called me all day because I called him about you, and then when he called me, we was on the interviews all day, so I couldn't answer. Yeah, but he called me. Called me back to back. I was like, dang, I wish I could answer, but I can't. You know. But yeah, I was gonna ask him about you. I sure was because it was a dude named Wicked Cricket. He was a um, radio yeah, person yeah, down in yeah. Houston, and he brought me down. He was my only manager I ever had. He brought me down into Houston. He had a, um, some type of stomach problem. Okay, this was about five about five years ago, and he you know connected me with Sean Trey, which was managing um, Bleed Young Bleed K Reno. Um, that's when I started ma- ma- uh, marketing and promoting for um, Pimp C Sun Group. The wow. UGK. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's when I met Zone Twenty Four, my cousin Buddha Ali over here. You know what I'm saying? Man, um, just the whole Houston. You know? Yeah, I had with, some young with, boys yeah, over here. Yeah. Trilly, Trilly Poke, them from yeah. he from over there. Yeah, he so. was just on the show, man. Shout out Trilly Poke, yeah. B Banks. Them boys out of Houston came down for the show. Yeah. 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 Like I said, they freak everybody coming through, man. Yeah. And it's just a blessing to be able to touch my brothers, man. Real talk. Mm-hmm. So hey, man, we appreciate you. Man, Did, is, what, what was you about to say, son? No, man, just use me, man. Yeah. Uh, like I said, these films, these books, so this COVID thing, man, get at me. Yeah, Let's I'm put together a tool. Yeah, Let's yeah. put together some screenings, get some money. I donate. Just get me down here. Get me a little Motel 6. We'll donate, I got you. Half, we'll donate half the money. I the got you. One on one. You feel me? This how I get money. I show my film. Then I do a Q&A. Then I do a, go somewhere else and s- sign my books. I do a workshop. I learn how to write a book. You know what I'm saying? Then I go to visit some type of um, youth center or something. Then that night we have a conscious after party. Wow. So that's the, I have a movement. I just don't have a record. So that's how we can go to, we can hit, we can hit 10 cities up. You just got to set it up. I got I the got product. You. So that's what we can do. And I, I yeah, I just want to tell everybody out there, man, if you listen, man, follow me on Instagram, yeah, Fleetwood SF, <laughs> man, um, hit me on the Facebook, Robert Bowden, uh, um, man, the Twitter is Fleetwood189, and please, man, whatever you do, stay close to God and what you want won't be far from you. I guarantee you, man, PP, praise and praise God every day. Pray and praise God every day. Call him what you want to call him, but call him, man, and you're going to be all right. Man. Love th- y'all, man. Love you, brother. Thank you for coming on the show, man. Yes, sir. Boss Talk 101. Yes, sir. And we out. Yes, sir.